So over the past, I'd say, 20 to 30 years, we've known that we can detect circulating DNA in the bloodstream. And this is cell-free DNA, not DNA that's part of the cells, but actually free-floating DNA in the plasma. And what this has allowed us to do is interrogate that plasma from cancer patients for genetic alterations that originate in the primary tumor. Well, that alone is an important scientific discovery, but really taking it to the next step, kind of marrying all the knowledge we have from the molecular genetics of cancer, which are the genetic alterations, the mutations from sequencing, <clears throat> we've been able to find those mutations circulated in the blood. And what we've been able to do is, number one, detect these mutations in the blood of cancer patients from a variety of stages, from advanced cases all the way to early stages of cancer. And more recently we've shown that we can use these genetic alterations in the blood to monitor disease and to most more importantly monitor whether or not after a certain therapy a patient may be cured or not. Um, which is really a step forward in a clinical standpoint because currently when we see a patient after a surgical resection, we don't know whether that patient is cancer free or not. And the only real metric that we have is time. We have to wait to see if this patient is going to recur or not. We don't know if we should treat them aggressively or if they can walk out the door and live the rest of their life knowing that they're cancer free. What this technology is going to allow us to do is after a surgery, assess whether there's any residual tumor left and whether or not that residual tumor will eventually become a recurrence. The newer generation of tests using next generation sequencing or massively paralleled sequencing is going to allow us to look at gene rearrangements in the patient's tumors and allow us a highly sensitive test to be uh, generated to look for circulating tumor DNA in the blood after a curative resection. Now, that may not seem that exciting at all, but to us clinicians, it's incredibly exciting. So we'll be able to tell a patient after their surgery, well, there may or may not be residual tumor. Therefore, you will need chemotherapy and radiation after surgery, or you will not. Now, that's very futuristic in terms of my uh, description, but the studies are ongoing right now, and I, and I feel that these may in fact be tools that clinicians use in the next three to five years. Now where does this technology lead us from there? Well, probably the most exciting approach of tumor DNA, not just in the blood, but in other bodily fluids, is in early detection. Whether you use mutations, whether you use gene rearrangements, as described by our most recent paper, uh, is unclear. But what we do know is the future of early detection and screening of the general population will employ some of this technology in one way or another. As our machines get better, as the sequencing gets cheaper, as our throughput or our ability to, to sequence the same portion of DNA over and over again improves, we're really going to be able to introduce these into the clinical uh, toolbox of the clinicians to help patients and help in decision making.